All right, well, let's turn in our Bibles to uh, uh, Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I want to read just out of um, that book today uh, a, a passage of Scripture. I might actually be okay. I don't think I'm going to need that today, Anne-Marie, but stay there for a while. I just There's a sense as we uh, came into, as the service progressed today, that I want to talk about, as we close vision today, I want to talk about uh, something that the Lord has really put, uh, I, that I just feel the Spirit want, and I want the Spirit to just have freedom here today as we, as we conclude in what I believe is a very important aspect of our vision. Uh, we, yesterday, uh, and for those, some of you will be aware, but yesterday we, we actually launched the four square denomination vision and, uh, had all, all, you know, many of our churches represented there. And, um, it's significant because, uh, I, I felt that what the Lord is, I feel what the Lord is doing is, is saying that we are a church, a denomination in transition that God is actually taking us from where we are and putting us somewhere else on a higher plane, doing more through us. And the five uh, things that we're focusing on as a denomination, and you know, it's important to get this perspective because Foursquare, uh, uh, the Foursquare family is a global family with something like nine million people worldwide as members. So it's a significant family. I mean, we play that down. We don't make a lot of noise about it. Uh, and, and I was the, the, am the worst offender, or was the worst offender in that, and not thinking about it. But God has placed us in a family that is doing significant work on the earth. And we can often think about ourselves just in the context of a fellowship uh, such as ourselves, but it's really hooked up to peop to massive moves of God in uh, in in you know in the unreached nations in 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 places where where millions of people are giving their life to Jesus because of what God is doing. It's significant. Should, should be mindful of that uh, and have a sense of that. That that we're part of that. We're we're also part of what God is doing through this family. And we returned, uh, and, and also, and significant also for the fact that what we talk about at a denominational level, uh, we, we should also talk about in a, at a church level because that vision really flows out. You know, it should, it actually needs to be connected. So when we talk about the things that are important for us as a denomination, in reality, we're also saying that those things are important to us here. So when we talk about Jesus uh, and the vision of this, um, of our family of churches, the vision of that uh, as being uh, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever, it's, it's what we've adopted. It's what we're holding to. It's what we've returned to, that everything is about Jesus, that everything is, is, uh, is, uh, revolves around Him, and that He is the one who keeps us balanced and centered, that keeps uh, on whom we might definitely, we might absolutely plan our future. That he's the one that has all authority. That he's the one, uh, you know, whose word uh, is the one who will build the church. He's the one who says that the church is built on him. That means on every promise of Christ. Um, uh, and that his presence, the promise of his presence is with us. Uh, and that he will keep us. Those, those fundamental aspects of who Jesus is. The question that he asks, uh, that he asks of Peter, who do you say that I am? Uh, that, and Peter has this revelation. It's a revelation that he's the Christ, the Son of the living God. But we are founded. We are founded. We are, we're, we're going to keep Christ the center of everything that we do. It's going to be there in our, uh, you, you know, and that means for us uh, not, not just who we are and the promise of Christ on our lives, but the fact that Jesus is to be shared. That what Jesus, uh, who he is and what he has asked us to do are the things that are going to really be where we focus our energy and our time and our resources. We'll focus them on Jesus. And that's really good, amen? Hallelujah. That's really so, such, a, such a fantastic place uh, to, to be starting from and to be returned to. And the second aspect, and what happened, uh, so what happened is we talked about the, the fundamental things of what Foursquare is going to focus on for, this, for these next four years. It's going to be focused on Jesus. 
It's going to be focused on uh, uh, re-embracing our family, who, who four square is, and the and uh, the fact that uh, um, you know that that we're a family. We really that needs to really come through. We're going to be focused on leadership. Uh, that we are in the midst of a changing season and that we need to give opportunity to new leaders. And it's going to be focused on mission and uh, the fact that we, uh, when we give away in mission, uh, God adds to us more than we give. And uh, that so much of what God has allowed us to become has, has happened because of mission. And then how to be relevant, how to be a church that relates in in current times are the sort of focus of, of where we're going to go, but starting with Christ as number one. And in, uh, in talking about vision and our vision month uh, this year, I really felt the sense of, of the Lord saying, emphasize Jesus. And then, and then we last week spoke about a sound of abundance. You know, just words that I felt the Spirit was prompting, uh, it, prompting us to go back to or to look at. And the sound of abundance is really just returning to the fact that we, uh, uh, and you know, that comes from Elijah. When Elijah is speaking to, uh, to, uh, to his servant, telling him, go and tell the king this. Go and tell the king that I hear the sound of abundance. Oh, what sound is abundance? And why is it heard before it's seen? But something of that to do with what we anticipate, something of what we feel in our spirit, something that's not related to just what we see, but there's a sense, there's something inside, something that operates at a different dimension, uh, this dimension of the spirit, and to know that we are that we need to focus on the spirit. We need to we need to we need to live in the dimension of the spirit. We need to uh, we we need to have the spirit in our lives speaking to us. We need to have, uh, we, need to, we need to be believing that the Spirit sovereignly empowers us. And that that affects everything. We're affected in, our, in, in who we are because it's the Spirit that bears witness inside of us, that we are the sons of God. There's something about the reality of our connection to God that we just, uh, that's bonded by the Spirit. And, and, and Paul says we come, we've, we're made alive in our spirits when we receive Jesus. Imagine that. Imagine that we, uh, we, we have a whole extra dimension because of the Spirit. Now, prayer life is affected. It's the Spirit that helps us to pray. And it's, uh, it's our ability to minister that's affected by the Spirit. Because it's the Spirit through whom we work miracles, through whom God works miracles. So that when we pray, when we lay hands, when we ask God for healing, it is the Spirit that enables that in us. The Spirit that has the power to make and change things extraordinarily that we don't have the ability to do. And today, as we wrap up vision, and, I, and, and for me, what was the third word on our vision was to be resolute, to listen for the sound of the Spirit, and to be resolute, to be resolute, uh, to be fixed. And I want to read from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, but it's extraordinary just what uh, this verse is connected to. And if you look at, uh, so let's just read it. And it says this, it says that, So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. And if this word in some translations of being steadfast, uh, 
is is connected is connected to this word of being resolute that when you look at the definition of a resolute it means uh, uh, something uh, it describes something it describes a direction it describes a sense of purpose it's a uh, it's like an admirable purpose so that if you if you're resolute you have something that you've resolved you're going to do it or you're not going to do it but you decide and there is nothing unwavering about that you, it has a sense of it that you're going to actually you're actually going to carry through with it uh, but for us um, it's more than that for for this in terms of what I feel the Lord was saying is like this the context of this word is a spirit word for us it's a word that we need to uh, uh, it's a, it's a direction we need to face in led by the Spirit to do so. And what that word does, what that stance will do, is that it will characterize who we are. That we are people who are resolute. That we are people who are unwavering. Is that we are people who have decided to do something fixed in a direction. Um, <clears throat> And, and 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 you know the the kind of there's a there's a kind of um, there's a kind of seriousness a kind of certainty uh, that that surrounds us. It, this word that will describe us as being resolute that is also steadfast also means steadfast. And amazing how often steadfast is used to describe God and God's love towards us. But you know, there's something, there's something else about this. There's something uh, that when you look at where this verse is placed in Corinthians, that when Paul says to us, you've got to be steadfast and be, and be, uh, you know, and be immovable, it's actually connected to a series of things that he is saying that are some of the biggest words to us as followers of Jesus. That in chapter 13, for example, Paul is writing about love and about how, and, and that how love prevails over everything. Chapter we know well. And then, and then he goes on in chapter 14 and he's talking about gifts, spiritual gifts and how we ought to desire the, the best gifts and, and talks about prophecy, uh, and tongues and talking about these big issues. Now he comes to chapter 15 and he says in chapter 15, about our future, about the resurrection from the dead. And so if you read with me, these verses to which 58 is linked, listen to what it says. It says that the scriptures tell us that the first man, Adam, was a living person, but the last man, uh, the last Adam, that is Christ, is a life-giving spirit. What comes first is the natural body, then the spiritual body comes later. Adam, the first man, was made from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. Earthly people are like the earthly man, and heavenly people are like the heavenly man. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. Amen. What I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to life forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies um, must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then when our bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us the victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then here flows out verse 58. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. 
always enthusiastically for the Lord. Uh, work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. I'm not sure if it's happened to you. Perhaps on a close family member, it has. But you get sometimes to spend the last weeks, months, maybe even the last day of a person's life with them. And especially if that person is a person who has known Christ and um, they're, they're conscious, or even, even just in that last season of their life. And you begin to, uh, you, you, you start to discover some things that are, that are true about it. It is like they get a vision into heaven. It's like they get a vision of what God is, of what God is uh, 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 letting them see before they pass out, pass through. You know, and they see, and you'll hear them talk about aspects of being content, of being, uh, of of being, of grace, uh, of being immensely peaceful and satisfied. You know, there's that sense that when you're with them, I'm sure. If you've been with someone who's passing through this life, uh, you'll have picked up something of that. In the midst of that tremendous sadness or sickness, there's this sense of peace that God is with him. And you know something? That this passage is a bit like looking through heaven's door. It's a bit like seeing into, uh, into eternity. Seeing that... Um, um, seeing what our life is going to be like, seeing that one day what is perishable will pass, will put on, will, will be, be imperishable, and uh, mortality will put on immortality. It's like looking through the door and knowing that this is not it for us. And Paul says, in that context, that this life is not all there is. Be steadfast and be immovable. Because you know this is not all there is. You know, we, um, it, it, is, it is so easy to be consumed uh, with the fact that this life, and it takes so much, that all our focus and energy is on it. And Paul says, don't make that mistake. Because you know that, that um, you know what you're connected to. It reminds us what we are connected to. We are connected to a life after this. Amen. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. And should be for us a source of joy. And then Paul says, he says, abound in the work of the Lord. So, so live at a level uh, that's, that it, if people were describing your life and your commitment to, you, to, to what you believe, let them describe it as something that you are bound in. I imagine it would be a great challenge. But, but someone would say that about us. Someone would say that, that there was something that characterizes their life. They were flat out. They were sold out. There was no doubt about what they stood for, about what their life uh, accomplished. And I thought about how does, how can we do that? How do, how would we, what are some of the things that we, that you would say about a life that abounds, that's described like that, if they were to say it about your life? Your life is characterized by that. And let me give you four things that I feel like we could do uh, that would, would live out this verse in our life. Uh, that would live out this abundance or abounding in our life. The first is this, uh, that we live for God. That our life is for God. That what we do, our service, what we give, uh, what, we, uh, what we commit to in time and, and, and resources and things that we do, we do it first for God. As a, you know, you can... People are good at thanking you. Sometimes you do jobs that are in a profile where people observe it and they applaud you and they, and they, and they, and you receive praise for it. But sometimes you're doing things that nobody notices. Sometimes you're doing something that a person just overlooks. 
And if you were looking for that to be an acknowledgement or a motivation for why you would do something, it's possible. It's possible you, you something would happen and it and you would and you would feel disappointed. But if we resolve in our hearts that we would first of all, first and foremost, uh, make our service towards God would be so would help. The second aspect of this is that we do it with gladness of heart. The way to ensure that we abound always in work is to uh, is to do it with a, a heart motive that starts with, that has joy in it. That's filled with joy. You know, Paul speaks about uh, when Paul speaks about. His service and to what he knows is going to be difficulty in his life, he says, I, it's for me, it's joy. I count it joy. I, I, the, the, what I'm doing here is not a hardship. And it's not for me to be, you know, to find significance, uh, to receive praise. Um, I'm, it, there's no motive here other than I do it out of joy. And the third thing about how we might abound in, in the work of the Lord is that we stay in love with Jesus. Don't let the work that we do overtake our love for God. Overtake the time that you spend with God. Don't let that be the thing that drives you, consumes you. It's difficult in ministry because you can work all the time. But we've got to stay in love with Jesus. We've got to make sure that in our daily schedules and in our time, we find time to worship, we find time to pray, we find time to reflect on who God is. And fourthly this, that we value the community that God has put us in. That we value the people around us, the privilege it is to serve others, the privilege it is to be in relationship with the people that we know. So these four things, love God, have a heart that's full with gladness, stay in love with Jesus, and value the people that are around us. Amen? As we close, I'm just going to ask as we get a musician here, I want to, I want to read to you a prophecy that we read out yesterday. Uh, this was a word that uh, Jerry Derman, and some of you will remember, Jerry was in a service here with us. And he gave at a pastor's meeting, he gave a prophetic word for WA. And I want to actually read that prophecy here today. Because I believe that it's a word that God's releasing. And I want you to listen to it. It says that a breakthrough is coming, says the Lord. A breakthrough and a breakout. Things that have been dormant and stagnant will come to life and break to a new level of glory not yet seen in West Australia. This will not happen as a surprise. It will not just fall out of the sky. Rather, I am speaking of a fresh vision and a direction by my spirit. And those who hear it and listen will be among the first to experience this fresh move. And then others seeing the clear increase of fruitfulness and joy, will humbly join in and begin to experience my glory. Some will not join in because it did not happen with them. Open your heart to receive from me, says the Lord, for behold, I do a new thing. Rid yourself and your heart from all that hinders, including discouragement and fear, battle weariness and unforgiveness. For when this move takes place, you will forget the shame and the barrenness and the reproach of lack. God speaks about a breakthrough that is coming. Something that will be uh, revive even things that are dead and bring a new level of glory. A fresh vision. Amen. Amen. How much we need that. How much we need that in our own lives. Hallelujah. There was something that I feel, you know, and we believe in God for certain things. We're believing that we'll see increase in our, in our, in our denomination. 
we're, believe, we're believing that we'll see salvations. It's just incredible to see uh, how God's already doing more than I expect there. But to see that happening um, is, is, and the sense of what God is releasing to us is so awesome for me. But I, but I feel there's something that the Lord is saying to us about how he'll, where he'll take us, how he'll transition us into the next stage. And, it, and it's this word of a hinge, of a hinge, that, that God's going to do something, but it hinges on us. It hinges on, on us actually accepting it. It hinges on our hearts being right. It, it, uh, it, it's, it's God will release this to us. Our, our next season, our future, God will release it to us. But um, it hinges on us receiving it, being willing to receive it, being willing to change in ourselves uh, and being willing to receive it from God. Amen. Let's just pray. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless God. Bless the Lord. Bless God. You know, if I was to just say to you today, how do you describe uh, this verse in your life? How does this, how does this exhortation of Paul describe you? And, uh, and, and uh, where you're at. Would you say that if you reflected on your life that you were abounding in the work of God? That it was something to which you were sold out? And perhaps if that's not the case, what would you do about it right now? Do you change that? Do you change an aspect of that? And perhaps if I might just make, take a moment and make a first step here, uh, a, a switch. Ask for those of us who have never received Jesus into our lives. Ask if you've ever done that, if you've ever received Jesus. Or if uh, you've received Christ, but right now you're not in a place uh, of close fellowship with Him. I'm going to ask if, you, if that's you, but you'd like it to change, you'd like to be recommit your life to Jesus, or you'd like to give your life to Jesus, just with our heads bowed and with our eyes closed, I'm going to ask for a moment, if you'd like me to pray a prayer for you to receive Christ, or to make a recommitment of your life to Him, just with no one looking around, I'm going to ask you to hold your hand up, Put your hand up and just hold it up. And I'm going to pray for you to make a commitment to Jesus today. Amen. Amen. And to make a re or to make a recommitment to receive Jesus, put your hand up right now. Amen. Amen. You can put your hand down. Bless the Lord. Bless God. Bless the Lord. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, just as you see today, this response. I pray that you will, in your graciousness, uh, overwhelm this heart, overwhelm this response, and do more, Lord, than they expect. Do something greater. And now for us, as we, um, as we just think about where this, this year is going to go and just where we're at, Perhaps just where you're sitting, just begin to ask the Lord. Tell the Lord, about, just give Him your heart today and afresh. And tell Him that um, you want this verse to characterize your life. A person who's steadfast, immovable, abounding in God's work. Just tell God you're here. And you want that to describe your life. You want those words to be the testimony of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, as we pray that prayer today, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that what you're, what you're firming up in us and changing in us will be so dramatically different from the people that we are 
right now as you change us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.